Cubes of the Cash, Gary B, the casual comic guy here, and join me as every Tuesday, we have Rob Fat Stacks of Comics. Rob, how you doing tonight, bud? I'm here. <laughs> there you go. There he is. <laughs> and at our age, sometimes that's just enough. That's a great shirt, right. Steve. Mm, yep, oh, got to yeah. represent. Well, right. And of course, my other, my other Tuesday cohort, Steve the Voice White. How you doing, Steve? Good day. Eh? And we got an extra cohort. With us uh, tonight in the co-hosting seat, we have Mark Andrews. How are you doing tonight, Mark? Very well, very well. Great to have you. And, of course, we're welcoming back the one the only, Mr. Chuck Hensey. Chuck, how are you doing this evening, sir? It's a great evening. It's good to be here. Nice. It's good to have you, man. Thank you for filling in. Uh, my original my original guest, Scott Horters Hyatt, has a reschedule. He had some work conflict come up, so I appreciate you jumping in last minute. And, sure thing. Uh, but uh, – Real quick, we'll do the quick two minutes, who you are, uh, what your Instagram is about, plug your uh, your YouTube real quick, and then we'll say hi to the crowd and come back to you, bud. All right. So I'm Chuck Henze. I'm down here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I love comics. <laughs> and if you go to my Instagram, I don't put a lot on my Instagram. I do you know, respond to people with comics and stuff. I love collecting comics, and I'm so happy to have found this community online because for so long for me, this was a solitary thing. And so it's so great to find other people who like what I have, uh, like the same thing I do, doing the same thing, and actually happen to share a lot of the same interest. Because as Mark knows and Rob knows, sometimes we go to cons and people look at us kind of funny when we're <laughs> digging in those those other boxes, right? And yeah. you know, and they, they give us strange looks and and I think wonder if you know they need to call security or something. So it's good to know there are other people wandering in those boxes. And so for today, I brought books from those other boxes because Ooh, it's the best ones. So um, I, like I do have a channel, Terrific Comics and Pop Culture. I do not post much there, I'm afraid, because uh, I'm a teacher during the regular time. And so uh, I was showing these guys behind the scenes the large stack of papers that I have to grade when I get <clears> off of here. So um, I'm hoping my geography students did not put Russia um, in France. <laughs> You don't you don't have like dice that have grades on them, and you just roll them and put whatever comes up on the on the Indeed. test. Um, there, there there may be a handful I could do that for fairly consistently, um, and then then I have my one who's the second in the junior class who who's a natural twenty every time. So, um, oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I like those ones. Yep. Oh yes, we do. They make your life so much better. They, they make me look smart, and they make yeah. me look good. <laughs> They make you look SMRT, huh? Hey, that's right. You know, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Good English right, say, there. Good right, English. Say hi to the crowd. Uh, so we got first in this evening, Brad. How you doing tonight, sir? Nice to see you. Hey there. James, good evening, sir. Nice to see you too. One of my all-time favorite people, Jerry the Jitterbug. Good evening, buddy. Jerry. And uh, Miss Tina Carrington, the OG Blue Ridge herself. How you doing, Tina? Nice to see you. Uh, Mr. Doug Bratton, and uh, for those of you out there who don't know who Doug Bratton is, he is the author of Isolation, which is going to be released as a in a Kickstarter format in trade, um, and um, pretty soon we'll get you the information on that when it launches. Uh, a nice, great horror title. You're going to want to make sure that you're following Doug Bratton on Instagram so you can get the notifications for when his Kickstarter launches with his book, Isolation. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's a great book. So, and of course, we got our our regular crew here: Mark Andrews and Steve White. We have Anachronic Comics, Joe. Good evening, Joe. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, we got we got our guest in there tonight saying hi, and and oh, let's see. Got uh, as we get it going, room. we have Marcus coming in. And guys, it's Tuesday. You know what Tuesday is, right? After our show, you head over to Circumstances Show. FOC and chill where he may or may not talk about the books that are coming out this week, but he's sure to have some great conversations. So please, after our show, please go check out Marcus over on his channel. And we got, we got Rob taking a few friendly shots at my kidneys, like always. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Rich, how you doing tonight? Comic Cap Collectibles. Nice to see you. Uh, Cole, how you doing tonight? Cole, nice to see you, buddy. Favorite hot dog topping. Uh, just meat sauce. Like a mm. good spicy meat sauce. Oh, very uh, we have Lady Ki Lady Fantastic Caroline. How you doing tonight? Nice to see you. 
And I think we're, we're getting there for a moment. And as everyone else, oh, Melodope, good evening, sir. Nice to see you. Mr. DVH. Good evening, sir. And as people pop in, we'll just keep saying hi. Tony, how you doing tonight, sir? Great to see you. Yep. And um, 23. Yeah, we're up 23 months. Great to yeah. see you. And if you guys aren't following him, go check out his YouTube channel. He does live art and he gives art away every Saturday night. So for your chance to win some original art, go follow 23 Munch. And not only that, he's a solid dude. So even better. Go support somebody that's great in the community. Uh, we have Frog Brawler. Good evening, sir. Nice to see you, buddy. Who uh, posted something on Instagram that had me rolling the other day. <laughs> so He's got a great sense of humor. Brother John. Good evening, sir. Nice to see mm -hmm. you. And... Uh, I think for the moment, guys, we are caught up. So I will just do a tip of the hat to the rest of people that come in as, as we see them. Uh, but let's get back to you, Chuck, and let's start with your first book. And you have a theme this evening, sir. I do have a theme. So we talk about those boxes that people don't go through. Mm -hmm. And when I was really kicking in on my collecting uh, bug in the early 90s and mid 90s, I got reading the official Marvel Handbook of the Universe, which was a very dangerous thing. <laughs> the comic stores much loved it because that's a great way to guarantee back issue sales for impressible young people with very little self-control and in there i found all these really great horror weird characters and i was like okay first appearance monster unleashed so we go into the comics room and we flip through and there's no monsters unleashed type and so you go the the, the, the comic store guy who you know looks like he's out of the simpsons you hey, where's Monster Unleashed? <sighs> well, if you don't have to under know anything, you have to look in the magazine books, right? And I'm like, they're magazine books. <sighs> <laughs> Did you just walk in the store for the first time today? And so, of course, you know, you had to go underneath subscription books and you know, behind the big stack of Valiant and Image books that you know are currently uh, rotting away somewhere. And, and he pulled wrong. out these boxes of magazine books. And I was hooked <laughs> because it was different. It was weird. And nobody else was down. Nobody else was looking for this stuff. Yeah. So we're going to do a magazine show today because magazines are awesome. They, they are. are. And, I will, and I will tell you that just about all of them, with the exception of Savage Tales 1, which I don't own, are probably undervalued yep. because people still don't really – they've taken off a little bit. They really don't seem to get – that these books are hard to find and that they're super, super cool. Yep. So, Hey, I know somebody that has all those Savage Tales books. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> you know. Um, well, and, and that's I, the I, thing, right? They were like unappreciated. Magazines were unappreciated what? For like the last like 30 years. No one wanted them. They're, you could get them for cheap. And now all the magazines are getting way up there. All of a sudden they've been discovered in the last two years and their prices are going astronomical. Right, they're starting to climb a lot. Now, it's funny, Doug's joking about me showing off 12 copies of Star Wars 1. I actually do have a magazine I have 12 copies of, but I did not bring it here. So I've been trying to give away copies of that. I got them in a bowl. You know set. what, Chuck, uh, it's your Playboy, and you don't have to show it if you don't want to. Oh, that's good, because I, I didn't bring it. It's, it's, it's not that great. It's, it's thrilling. It's uh, it's the Atlas Thrilling uh, Adventures. Thrilling Adventures. One. Oh, you sent me one of those. Right, I sent you one. Yeah, that, that got me down to, I think, only 13 copies at that point. So. <laughs> And then I went and bought the second issue. I was like, oh, like I, I loved it. What a great magazine that is. It is. So so we are going to start off today. Um, in our group chat, we mentioned that we were going to, uh, they said it was going to do this. They said they wanted to have an epic show. So that means the first book we're going to start off with, of course, is Epic, is epic Comics. Excellent. Nice. And with a great Sienkiewicz cover here. It is. Now. If you're not familiar with Epic, you are really missing out on something a lot of fun. This was an opportunity that Marvel tried to do with creator of own stuff and really just sort of let people kind of go crazy. Yep. And they could do whatever they wanted. So, like, number three is the first appearance of Dread Star. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're a big Dread Star fan, you remember that. I think it's Jen Starlin who created him. You know, there it is right there. I picked this one for a couple of reasons here. I got the entire run uh, from a local guy for about a hundred bucks at a con. And he kept his books really, really nice. He used to work at um, the first LCS I shopped at. So this of course is a great skin, skin cabbage cover on it. Um, the, this, those original stories were great. Like you had creators like Neil Adams doing stuff too. And yep. just, 
Oh my God! Yes. Oh yeah. You look. You look. I mean, there's you know Charles Vess artwork. <laughs> I mean, there's all sorts of just incredible stuff and a huge variety of stories too. That's what makes this so awesome. Yes. Is you just got a you got you know uh, barbarians in one. You got elves in another one. You got superheroes in another one. You've got you know kind of interesting horror stuff. You know, in, in another title. There's no rhyme or reason. People in bubble helmets and other ones, Rob. Yes. There are bubble helmets in there, Rob. So you, you know, if you haven't got some. Oh, and, and uh a shout out for Rob too. Rob, you gotta look at the catwoman this week has her in a bubble helmet on the cover. You're muted. Yeah, but it's magazine size. Yeah. <laughs> but they make see, magazine and that's why Rob. people and that's why there are certain people who just don't collect these and why these are available is because there are people like me who go, uh ah, they're but they're they don't fit in my box. Expand your horizons, Rob. That's how you get special Man. boxes, you see. Uh, <laughs> they have their own boxes. They yeah. do. And for that reason, he's out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they there just are two other things about this, things. which makes I it can, awesome. I appreciate them, and I appreciate, just like I appreciate treasuries, but I don't own any because they don't fit in my boxes. And, and I, I thank you. And I thank yeah. you for your lack of support. So uh, <laughs> more for Chuck. Yeah, right. More for us it's, guys to buy. You don't need me competing it. with you on stupid stuff. No, that's all right. I, I'm I'm already mad at you for taking all the, the old Flash Gordons away. So you right. know, so well. there's that. Um, so we've got the first of the last uh Galactus story, which is just a fantastic tale. And I don't think they ever actually finished it, but it would appear mm -hmm. sporadically in epic. And then, uh, which I did not realize about this book until I flipped through it last night, because you know I'm supposed to be grading. So of course I'm playing with comics. Um, oh, you got to take breaks in between because you know it can be a little harrowing doing well, all that's that. That's what the grading dice are for, Chuck, to make it go quicker so you can play more. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could grade map quizzes faster. Um, this is also the first color appearance of Cerebus. Yep. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. If we have any Cerebus fans here, this is a key. So, um, yep. So it's just it's a, it's a cool run. So it right. is a, it is a really good run. It's a good series, and it's not expensive. There's like yeah. so many cool stories, cool covers. Every artist under the sun almost has put a cover on Epic and you know, yeah and they're they're really undervalued and that's okay because the you know if chuck and i lived in the same city it would be bad it would be but <laughs> unfortunately, they, they, they stuck a boy international border between us so we're safe yeah. so um, we're, we're not all booing each other out of the way when we're going through here in rochester i think i just got one guy i'm competing with when i buy those old magazines yeah. they put up <laughs> well, an ice I, wall between us yeah well and i will say uh, raleigh is an interesting place for back issues because We've always we've maintained sort of three or four stores over the last 30 years. But surprisingly enough, two of them had really, really good back issue for magazines. Wow. Uh, where one of them, the artist Andrew Peepoy, sold a bunch of his magazines to them. And so I've got a couple in here that I'm pretty sure are from his collection. Well, one I know for definitely is from his collection. Wow. And the other store just had a bunch of them because they just had everything. So about half of this stuff I bought locally, which nice. was just... Nice. That's always Which the, the best way you know, to do it. So, before you get to book two, I just want to give a quick mm -hmm. shout out to Bill from Comic Mag Musings, guys. If you like magazines, if you like old school horror, and of course Conan, go check out Comic Mag Musings channel where you will see all sorts of magazine goodness over there. Huge magazine hauls, great old books, and he's coming up for his second appearance on the Ten One One this month. So, but go check out his channel; you will not be disappointed, uh, and you'll love his sense of humor. He is a bit of a ham. <laughs> all right, book number two, sir. All right, so number two, um, my favorite band of all time are, are the Beatles. That's, you know, I, I actually had a student who argued with me about it this year, and I was impressed that he knew who the Rolling Stones were. Um, they, that, you, you can't do much about his choice, taste, but he did wear mm -hmm. NC State gear this year, so we can forgive him. Um, but so I have here the Marvel Super Stories. Yep. Oh, nice. With the Beatles. That's a cool And, cover. you know, with my, my second appearance here, I showed off a lot of my 60s sort of psychedelia stuff and wild stuff. So this is is a is a wonderful part to have as part of my collection because 
I just love the Beatles. So still got anything the with Beatles and comics, yep. I try to grab. And that's just a fantastic cover, too. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Nice book. Yes, it is. And it's hard to find, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's another one that's got a great crossover appeal with, you know, your, your Beatles paraphernalia people who will grab anything yep. with the Beatles. So. Well, that I'm whole still- Marvel super special run, there's some that are, you see all over and there's, and there's some that are just hard to get their, your hands on or they're yeah. all beat to death. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, or, yeah, that kiss one goes for a hefty price. Or the kiss oh one. Oh my gosh! Yeah, there's another yeah. one. Like, yep. I assume that the student was arguing that the Rolling Stones were better than the Beatles, rather than arguing that you like Rolling Stones more now, than the Beatles. Yeah, no, he was arguing the Rolling Stones were better, and you know, I can at least, you know, he at least has a sense of music, so that there is there is hope. So, mm. um, you just yeah. have him go count number one hits. Yeah. <sighs> You know, it wasn't worth arguing. I, I was so I was so shocked he knew both the Beatles and the Rolling Stones were that I didn't want to. I didn't want. I didn't want to push my luck. So. Want to crush it, um, <laughs> right? That's because the Rolling Stones are still there. Like they get rolled out on stage, and yeah, yeah I was going to really say. Cool. Well, <laughs> as long as long as I suppose as a student, he had a position. He argued it with some sense of actual thought and logic to it. Mm-hmm. Give him an A and move on. Yeah. I, actually, I, I, I can't wait to meet his dad and compliment him on providing his son with good taste. So, um. right, At this point, those guys, they have to rehydrate them before they even put them on stage. They're all... <laughs> Yeah, they well, have ID they, poles. They roll them out in the steel yeah. wheelchair tour. You guys think I, those are going to the guitars and the instruments and the mic? That's actually their yeah, that's a feeder on. tube. Right. I hate, to think, I hate to think what Mick Jagger gets to get on stage. So, anyways. Um, all right. <laughs> Number three here. How many kilos of Coke? What? Oh. <laughs> well, we've been wondering that for a while. So I have two for number three because they, they're both by the same publisher and they're the same type of genre. Um I didn't realize until I went to a con about 10, 11 years ago that Charlton Comics did magazine books. Mm, and the really? one that got my attention was Emergency One, which I didn't pull out here, oh. though it's got an awesome Neil Adams cover. Yep. Um, Bobby. Instead, I have, first of all, a $6 million man in oh, honor really? of Joe and talking about his pickups at our last gathering. Yep. Um, a great no, Neil I Adams cover both. here. I hate you both now. <laughs> This uh, series ran, I think, eight issues. Really, that so. many? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you hate all three of us now? Yeah, I hate you too, Mark. <laughs> you guys all suck. So <laughs> much for Canadian friendliness, huh? That's it. It's over. Don't worry, Steve. I don't have one. It's the wrong size. <laughs> yes. Right. Henchmen unite. <laughs> So I have this one, and the other one I have is uh, from one of my wife's favorite shows. Um, uh, yep. oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's an awesome show. Clearly second season, because you got the crazy lady with the feathers whose name I can't remember. Um, um, oh, it's crazy gone. Feather lady. I I've still know. never seen an episode of that show, and I have it on my Tubi list to watch. Oh, don't really? Here's, it's bad. There's actually it's a really, YouTube really channel bad. that shows all of them, and it's Live. if you've got Amazon Prime, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. So it does not hold uh, up. <laughs> and now, no, come no, on. the first season is okay. The second season, you yeah, I'm not sure what they were doing second season. So but I say the same thing with <laughs> Beck Rodden, too. Yeah, they didn't so, know what they were doing the second season. No, I think there were enough drugs on the set that they probably were not aware of what they were doing. But no this is just this is an awesome, beautiful cover. Oh, the yep. 70s. Um, the 70s. Yes, I know. That's right. If you remember the 70s, you were either too young or you weren't there. So um, <laughs> it's OK. But this is uh, this is seven issue series, I think. And again, yep. these later books are hard to find. So, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah. But anyways, the, so this is. Just some cool Charlton stuff. So, yeah, and they did a couple of issues of Emergency also in the uh, magazine size, yep. along yep. with it. So, and again, a spectacular cover. Yeah, and, you know, they yeah. put so much work into the magazine covers. Like so many of them were painted; they were beautiful. Yep. And the likenesses of the actors and uh, uh, is really, really remarkable. And yep, I mean, that's good. part of what makes them so collectible. You know, yeah, and just so cool to see. So. I remember making sitting there watching that show and I made the ship out of Lego. 
<laughs> oh wow, you made out Lego. I'm in, okay. That I'm no, impressed. Now. Yep. Thank you, brother John. So we did with Legos all the time. Was any toy that we couldn't have, we had yeah, to, we, Legos where Legos came in. You made them yourself. Yep. Right. <laughs> yes, you did. Unless you were like me and you were not like capable of engineering Legos, and so you just looked at them and cried because it didn't look like <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look like the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was traumatic, you know. It's you like may have to life. change the name of the show, Gary. Right. <laughs> there you go. Childhood trauma. Ten one one. Yep. Well, yeah, that's why we show off our books, right? To to get mm -hmm. over the trauma. So yeah, we're sharing tonight. <laughs> yeah, we're sharing. Okay. You ready for number four? I yeah, am. Bring it. All right. So number four is an AOK -okay I got from a great friend who is here, and that's from Tina. And Tina found out that I was starting to collect Love and Rockets. And so oh. she sent me a whole bunch of Love and Rockets books uh, as an AOK. -okay. And this is one of them she sent to me. Wow. Wow. That's a cool card. Um, so where does she find her uh, thing? Like th these were hers. Oh, so they, they were hers. These, yeah, wow. no, these, were, these were hers. So, and I got to tell you, I have loved reading them. And, and I know I've told her that privately, I think, but I really, really enjoyed reading them. They have been, uh, it's really been eye opening. I, I always knew about them. And I dated a girl in college who liked Love and Rockets. But I never actually read it because I kind of opened one up and I looked at it and I went, eh, you know, I don't know. But um, but now that I'm a lot older, um, I you really, really do love them. So, oh, and Tina, there's a really gotta show off your collection yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, nice. right. And, nice. and just for a quick sh uh, shout out to Tina too, like her collection's got to be amazing. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, imagine her on the ten one one. Come yeah. on, yeah. Tina. <laughs> You Come don't on, even have to you show your face. Just show the books. One. Just, just <laughs> put the camera at the books. You don't have to do nothing. Yes, yeah. Frog Brawler. That is number 24. Yes. That's number 24. Yeah, nice all red cover, red and black. Yeah. Yes. So, um, and there was a really good documentary that was done on the Hernandez brothers. I think it was done on PBS. Um, it clearly, it's not gotten as much traction as the Dave Stevens one did. But uh, it's really, really good listening to them talk about their um their journey into comics and you know how they went how they went through things and everything and how they developed their styles and it, it it really is a blast to watch so um and that's also part of what got me into these too so nice. but i want to show this because it's an awesome cover and an awesome book so right and then you know once you start reading the magazines you get hooked on them pretty quick Oh yeah, yeah. Like magazines are easy to get hooked on. Yep. Well, and, and Love and Rockets is so fascinating because it's clear they started off with one idea of a story. And as they got writing it over the years, it morphed and it changed and it evolved and it went away from what they had originally started to something else, which I think was even more interesting than where they started. And so, you know, it, it's fascinating watching that growth as the create with the creators you know, as they develop their series and everything. So, right. So good. Book. All right. Nice books. So next up we have um, one of my favorite movie series, at least the original series. The last two reboots have <clears throat> not really done it for me. Oh, here comes Indy. God, I wish. Um, however, the comics are amazing. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. There we go. Planet of the yep. Apes. And this is the last issue of the run. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. now are you, are, you the collecting the new, uh, are you collecting the new Marvel one of that, Chuck? Uh no, I'm not actually. I um as I said, the 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 the, the current Planet of the Apes just really has not done anything for me. And so I've now I won't say I've soured on the IP, but I'm just not in into it. Right. right now, so it's not a bad read, Chuck. Actually, I'm I am reading it because okay. I'm like you. I like went to see those movies, the the real the original ones. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like, but that the magazine run is an awesome run. It it and the last few issues are really hard to find because they were such short print runs. Exactly. Um, yes. But, and Comic Mag is right there. What I love about these is the Mike Plu the Plug artwork. Yep. 
it just really knocks your socks off. Yeah. And just incredible. So, yeah. Um, so these are a lot of fun. And as you said, Mark, these are hard to you get to the later issues. Yeah. You know, I got this as part of a larger bulk set on eBay. Nice. Because if I try to buy it individually. Who's oh, the publisher okay. of that one? Uh, this is Curtis. So this is Marvel. Curtis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Curtis yeah. and Marvel. So, and there's some uh, interesting uh, different versions of those books. How they kind of, at the beginning, they then they stopped following and then they came back to the movies and yeah. and whatnot. But it's, it's still, it's a good read. They're great books. The covers on them are, most of them are really, really nice books. Exactly. Yeah. And if you, and if you buy the uh, 1974, 75 series adventures of the Planet of the Apes, they're basically taking these stories and yep. putting them in a regular comic format and in color. Yeah. So, and they are quite a bit cheaper yes. than trying to track down the magazine. So, yeah, absolutely. And it's and funny too because you're seeing a resurgence of some of these old IPs like this, and yep. I'm I'm hoping that we're going to see like because Dick Tracy comes out what next week. I'm hoping mm-hmm. we're going to see like a resurgence of Doc Savage and some uh, Flash Gordon, some other old IPs, which would be nice. Blackboard? There is a yeah. Flash Gordon, I think, coming out short soon. There may be. I know they've been arguing about the well. I think those Buck Rogers has had the rights stuck in. Oh yeah, I would like to see a buck, but I want to see them set in the time they're supposed to be set in. I don't want to see them modernized. Oh yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, the the <clears> um, <throat> the Sci Fi Channel's Flash Gordon was was a hot mess. Yeah. So that was yeah that was that was. We're not well, there was a reason that. that was here and gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, yeah Mad, Mad Cave Studios has got a series coming out. Flash. Did it? Of, oh, yeah, well, it's gonna free comic book day. It'll be a, a an issue. Flash Gordon Zero, uh, which mm-hmm. is gonna launch the series. Uh, that okay. is true, Bill. And also, we're seeing um, Gold Key starting to relaunch yeah. some titles yeah. like Boris Karloff. Yeah. And- yep, Boris the Boris Karloff, Karloff like, book. Yeah, right. And that's a great, great one. Stuff. It's good seeing some of the old stuff come back. Well, that's you know, a lot of those IP. There, there's a lot in those IPs that if you update them some, <clears throat> excuse me, they do really well. I've been uh, um, Amazon Prime now has uh, Phantom 2040 on there, and yes, once you get past yesterday. the weird, you know, Aeon Flux, you know, faces, the cartoon itself is actually pretty darn good. I'm. Mm. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by that. I had not the, the style of animation had turned me off of it when it came out, but it's it's not a bad watch. Right, actually. it's got quality writing, and they actually understand the character. But they did that too. Like remember back in the day when they had Defenders of the Earth, and they put all those oh, yeah. all those King properties together. That was a mm-hmm. that was a fun cartoon. Yes, it was, and then the and Marvel a, Mini a little comic fun. series. Yeah, that I mean, a- all the comic series was was re- redos of the episodes, but it was still fun. That was a star uh, label, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah, I got I got them here somewhere. Yeah. Wow. All right. All right number five. Okay, so I promised some horror because you can't talk about Marvel monsters without with Marvel. Uh, you can't talk about magazines without talking about horror. Right. So we got some horror here. Uh, yep. Oh, Tales yeah. of the zombie. Yep. Tales of the zombie. Good old Simon Garth showing up. Yep. Um, I love these covers are just they're, they're fantastic. Cover. Oh, they are. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a this is a fun series. This series is really good. It is. Um and you know, and it does remind you, of course, you know, why they were put in magazine format was so they could get around a lot of the censorship. Right. Now, um, they have to do the comics code authority. That's right. right. Yep. So, you know, so you do see a little bit more gore. You see a little bit more blood. Uh, you know, there are women who occasionally are not wearing all their clothes. Um, you know. That's really? These things happen. Not necessarily all at once, but sometimes, you know. Um, they got to make sure they check off all the boxes for each story. So, um, you know. <laughs> But this is just this is this is a really cool series and these lovely super annuals, which are you know even bigger than the regular ones. Yeah, you know, they pack so much stuff in there, and it's just it's really, really neat. 
to see. So, um, nice books. And that's the final yeah. issue again. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's the last of what's the number of those, Chuck? That's there, uh, there were 10 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, and even though it says a collector's edition and don't miss, and usually that's the kiss of death, there, there, it's a good book to pick up if you like that's if you're into that genre unlike i know rob won't because it's too big but it is it's good art it's they're good books <clears throat> awesome awesome choice right and a lot a lot of times more serious storytelling and which was a, a good breath of fresh air from what you were regularly reading yep yeah yep. there's one yeah, on one of the books for been... 20 bucks there you go steve you wow. could join the club and get wow. that one Yep. And wow. exactly. So in some of these classic artists, right, Earl Norum, as everybody knows, is one of my all-time favorite cover artists. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. My love of Earl Norum got Joe and Earl Norum, and Joe started collecting them. Uh, but Boris Vallejo, um, yep. you know, is – you had so uh, Ken Kelly, you did, mm -hmm. um, Julie Bell. You just had so many great artists back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's – like I said, it's just – is awesome. And for me, of course, I used to live in New Orleans. So this is set in New Orleans, which is kind of fun. And, and these guys actually, the writer actually researched New Orleans and, you know, and remember that, yes, no, they really don't have basements there. So. Right. Uh, it, 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 they all be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which puts them ahead of Howard Mackey and, you know, but really that's not a really a race. So, um, you know, <laughs> great book though. And that, man, yeah, that even had annuals. I, yeah. I think I have the one annual of it here somewhere. Yeah. So, <clears throat> okay. Number six. All right. So um, one of my favorite artists is Will Eisner, uh, oh. which I don't think a lot of people know about me, but obviously Will Eisner is expensive. Yes. Um, yep. if you're going to get, you know, original Will Eisner. However, Warren magazines are really awesome and they reprinted a ton of his stuff. Uh, and so, Yep. Ooh, we had a great oh, run of the spirit God. here. And so I want to make sure we had some good girl art to balance out yep. all the horror. So, you know. Well, and that's the thing too. His style is just so nice and unique. Well, it is. And yeah, and this was a great way for me to get read the stories that, you know, I couldn't get my hands on otherwise. And, you know, I'm a couple issues short because it went over to Kitchen Sink after Warren went defunct. Um, but you know, there's about 40 issues in this series, um, that were done in these magazine size collections and they're just great to read. Yes. Sleepy. I, I agree with you completely. Yes. This, this is a fantastic way to read the spirit. So, and it's just, I mean, how can you walk away from this cover? Right. It's amazing. And I mean, I'm the time period too, you still got the girl in the red dress on the cover. Yep. Mm hmm. Always got to have a girl yeah. in a white dress or, or a white or a white nighty running away from something. Yep. White, red dress yeah. in distress, green dress in distress, white yep. dress in distress. Mm hmm. Well, heck, it just says here special issue featuring, featuring the beautiful but deadly female foes of the spirit. I promise you that if I had picked this scene at 13, I immediately wanted to find out who all these women were. Yep. <laughs> because. <laughs> Yeah, it was important. I mean, you know, right? The knowledge. <laughs> and again, those are that's another book that is not hard to. Those they're they're not expensive. No, they're not. This is they're, this is probably fifteen or twenty dollars. So yeah, and forty yeah. issues is a pretty good run for that. Yeah, it, it was. was and, yeah, and it you know it was over you know a, a ten to twelve year period I think, but you know no, it's a great great run of stuff and just. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's just a fun read. I yeah. mean, you know, it's a fun read. And it's, it's fun to neat. collect, too. So. Yep. And again, it's like so many of these, they're so hard to find in good condition. Yeah. And I got lucky, and I found a guy on eBay who was my source. So, you know, I found a source. and yep. Yeah. So, so you immediately click on yes on all the auctions and just, you know, worry oh, about the crap. worry about the payment plan later because – you know, <laughs> right? He, pull, he pulled in a big fish that wanted him. <laughs> that, hey, that's right. Well, you know what? That's okay, right? Right. So, 
Wow. My comic shop's got a number one in the CGC 9.8 for a thousand bucks. Whew. Yeah. A okay. Nine eight. A 9.8. That's the price yeah. you found a 9.8 in a magazine format and that makes yeah. it. Right. For, and and it's all right. reprints, right? So yep. and it's still worth it. It's all right. reprints. Yeah. That's. No. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a lot. So. Yeah, that's. Well, if you yeah. crack it out and clean and press it, you get a 9.9. They're giving them okay. away now. We, 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 will, we will be standing on the side cheering for you. And yes. for you go us. ahead, Steve. <laughs> so we, yeah. we will let you test that theory. And so. buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Next, uh, next, next one, buddy. So, so I mentioned Atlas Books. And Atlas, of course, did a handful of magazines. I do not have the rarest one, which is the Gothic yeah, Romances I mean, ones. Oh, the Romances, yeah. I've seen a picture of it. I've seen it on eBay a couple times, and it has been way the heck out of my price range. But I do have some of the other ones. And I mentioned Thrilling Adventures, of course, which I could have brought. Um, but, you know, we got horror, right? So we want horror. Well, yeah. Cover. Yes. Mm. Oh, wow. wow. And I think this is better than cover. Devilina covers. I like the Devilina covers, but to me, this one is a lot better. So... Uh, so you got your weird tales of the macabre, yep, and a great torture cover. Um, that there is such a thing, I guess there is. Um, Wonder Woman says so. So yeah, um, you know, you got your devil here in the background in the silhouette right here in the red. You got your funky monk guys. I mean, you know. So right now, look at that cover. You wouldn't get that cover on a regular comic. That cover is just amazing. Oh yeah. 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 No, you would never, they wouldn't allow that, that wouldn't have been able to be distributed. Exactly. And even, even their, uh, their little horror magazines that the comics they did, like Tales of Evil was a great, great covers on those three issues. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, Atlas produced a lot of good work. I mean, they really did. Yep. And I think we forget about that at times, you know, because they lasted, they were so quick. As right. Comic right. Mag mentions here, this is another Vallejo cover right here. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. But, Only two issues in that series, eh? Yeah. Well, you know, that's uh, it's Atlas for you, right? I mean, there are only two issues in Devilina, one issue of the Gothic Romance, you know. Right, because I think of, what, they had like 67 issues total that they that they made or something. Yeah, the, the longest thing of the series ran were four issues. So Yes. Yeah. But... Again, and those are like like you, Chuck. Those are books I pick up when I see them. I every time I see Atlas Seaboard, I try to get them. I just yep. sent two out for grading. Oh, see, that's cool. Yeah, nine nines. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> well, maybe because uh, it's CGC, so <laughs> maybe a ten. Uh, you know, if you can find any Atlas Seaboard in nice shape, you, you've done really well. I mean, I've got an eight five Vicky number one downstairs. Ooh. And, and I've know, never I'm, seen the Vicky uh, in person because, like you said, those are really hard to find. Yes. Yes, they are. So I got lucky with that one. I think I scored that one at a con. Callie with a good pun there. <laughs> That's right. You see, you got to set them up well. So there we go. There you uh, go. <laughs> and I don't know the distribution of those wasn't really wide. Like, I don't know how far afield because I've never talked to anybody that bought one at a shop up here they we've yeah. only only seen them on the secondary market i don't i don't think they made it all the way down here either i'm going to be quite honest now being on the east coast they may have made it down here and just nobody remembers buying them yeah but um but yeah most of the guys around here haven't never mentioned anything to me about actually buying it here i got this off ebay i mean i'll, yeah. I'll be like, quite honest right. so, i've never yeah. talked to anybody that actually bought one off the rack it's yeah. old. I never did. I always I found Atlas Seaboard after way after market. Like yeah. well, uh, two years ago, I, I found out about Atlas Seaboard. And that was a rabbit hole I've, I've dove down. I got a bunch of the series now. But thing is, I never seen them uh, where I was from on the comic shelves ever. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know where. It must have been pretty limited to wherever the heck they were. It was so weird. They had such good talent there. Yep. Like yeah. Larry Lieber and all these great artists. Neil Adams did some stuff. And. Mm -hmm. uh, he did some Iron Jaw. Just so many, so many good characters. The fun the characters. Talent, talent only serves you if you, if you have marketing. So, 
Yep. There, there's that. And that could have that could have been part of their downfall was their marketing. Like where did they yeah. try to sell their books? Yeah, I think that was probably part of it. And I think they got caught in that big blizzard that also uh, knocked out the um, DC, the DC titles. Too. So I think they might have gotten caught in all that too. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. okay. Thank you, Sleepy. I did not know that. Cool. Well, and that would make it sense that it would have been in the New England area if they were published in in New York. So, mm -hmm. okay. Cool. Interesting. All right, number eight. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. So I decided to go overseas with this one because, you know, you get a lot of the British books and the British books tend to be oversized. And um, this is one, actually, I've got two copies of this, both complete, uh, that I found here in town. It's nice. a little book. Oh, nice. Wow. That's yeah. So, yeah. So I've got two of these and they both have the mask in them. So, oh, CDVH. cool. Really? Yes. Nice. And I found them both at the two the two stores I mentioned. So they were just sitting there in the back issue bin. And I guess this is the mid nineties. But yep. um yeah, they were just sitting there and got them for a song. I think I paid maybe ten dollars for it. Man, absolutely yeah. nice. And the British so, bags are so nice. Yep, they're pretty they they're pretty unique. Well, and they're hard to find in nice shape because the the paper quality here is is Charlton level p paper quality. I mean, it's, yeah. it's oh, tissue paper. It's yeah, the, yeah the, that the, is the a thing. Though, they're, they're thin, right? The the pages are so thin on a lot of yep. those. It's, they're wisping. They, they are. They're very very thin. It's very easy to get dents and everything. And you know, this is one of those runs. This runs really funny because uh, outside of one and eight, obviously eight, you know, being the other big key. You can find a lot of sort of two through 10 or 12. Yep. You look for 13 through 18. They are ghosts. Yeah. You you have to pay through the nose for them. Now you get to like 15 or 16, you get a Captain America crossover. You have a couple of red skull covers in there. Um, yep. I don't think that's why they're ghosts. They're just, you can't, I, I had to pay through the nose to get those, to get those books. Wow. And then you get up to about like 23 and then you start finding them fairly without too much trouble after that. So some of the, uh, the splash pages in the British books are always amazing too. And a lot of those books, because quite often they have nothing to do with the story. It's just it's oh, yeah. a splash page for the sake of having a big splash page. Or, or they do a poster in the middle, which was like completely like that character yeah. is not even in that book, but you have this beautiful poster in yeah. it. Or no, you get no. a random backup story in black and white that just made absolutely, you're just going, why Why did you put a Nick Fury story with Captain Britain? I don't. Just for flavor. <laughs> yeah, are you foreshadowing or did you just, were you just bored with eight pages? I mean, I don't know. You know, <laughs> We got eight pages. What are we going to put in it? Is that so thing in a Let's throw in eight pages of a Nick Fury story, so you'll really be confused. Yep. Yeah. And, and what I hate, what I did hate about that though, Chuck, too, right, is you get in there and you'd have you'd had eight pages of a story. You needed the next magazine to continue the story. So they take a, an American comic, which was one That's issue, and they split mm -hmm. it up over three, four uh, magazines yeah. with three yeah. with three other comics also split up through those magazines. And you're like, oh. <laughs> Well, and Captain Britain leaves the series because the sales on the series was never very great, was never very good in Britain because, you know, they just kind of looked at it and went, why? Um, you know, and so he got moved to a backup in like the Superior Spider-Man reprint series. So it goes Superior Spider-Man and Captain Britain. So, you know. <laughs> so. I can't see why you don't yeah. want to get into on this, Rob. Like, uh, just. <laughs> Tough in my box. <laughs> Rob's saying he has enough obsessions. He does not need a new. Oh, one. Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and magazines symmetry. are a huge rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. 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 Movie posters are a huge rabbit hole, but it didn't they stop are. me there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's an entire genre of magazines that have space bubble helmets 
Oh, oh there are. absolutely. There's all kinds of sci. Now, I could go, I could go down the pulp rabbit hole if I wanted to too, but <laughs> I choose not to because I like to stay married. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. Yes, I, I that, that that's what's prevented me from going after a couple things. I will I will confess. So um, it seems to have worked so far. So. <laughs> All right, so number 10, right? Number nine. Number, number nine, nine, excuse me. Okay, so going back to the horror, this is my favorite magazine cover of all of my covers. Wow. And it is, one, it's super sharp, but two. Oof. Yep. Sweet. Oh, nice. That is a sexy cover. Yep. Sweet Christmas. And you look in his eyes. That's like blood and flame and some yep. kind Let's of. see if I can I'm gonna reduce the glare here a minute. Like people in the eyes there. Yeah, that's her reflection. The victim. You got a young lady there. Nice. Yes. The red dress in distress. Yep. Yes. Is that one in a poly bag too? Was that last one yeah. in a poly bag? Yes, they're in poly bags. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So. Nice. This is just this, this is a fun series. This is a great series to read. You got the first Satana in there. Yep. First uh, Solo Blade. Man, uh, and that, and that Santana issue is expensive. It's, well, so is, yeah, so is the blade. Yes. But Santana's the the real expensive one out of that series. Yes, she is. She yeah. is. Um, that's why I'm so glad I went after these starting in the '90s, where nobody cared. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! And that Santana cover is just amazing too. Yeah. Well, just look, just hold hold thoughts here. Just. Okay. just <laughs> Don't, don't hit the fast forward button on the show yet. Now, okay. Take about thirty seconds off of there. We 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 got we got to build the things here. So, oh man, yes, yes. Now, Thank who you, did Callie. that cover? Uh, hmm? Who did that cover, Chuck? I don't know who did that cover. It kind, it kind of looks I, like a Jusco. Yeah, I am not. I will confess, I'm not the best in the world with artists. So, uh, well, with um, the magazines, it's usually on the front, on the on the inside page. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember who did that one. Yeah, rip it out of the poly bag and read what's on the first page. No. No. Yeah. No, don't, don't. Yes, I have number two psychedelic. Yes, I do. I have the I have the entire run of the series. So, yeah. Let's see here. Bob Larkin did the cover. Larkin. Oh, all right. A great Bob. Another great artist from yeah. them too. So there we go. See, it looks nice even without the poly without the poly bag. So you know. Yeah, it is astounding. Very nice. So it's amazing what you could find on eBay back in the day. Oh yeah, and the the lady in distress kind of looks like Vampirella, but. In the, in yeah, the it's clearly not her though. I don't know. No, who it it's is. not her. But that's when you. It's kind of like shelf bait, right? When you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number ten, Sorry. right? Sending Doug Bratton a message here. Uh, number ten. All right. And so and I think I have a clue now what it is. <laughs> well, uh, you got a clue of what may what may be coming up. I got a little bit more here. So this is um, one I picked up because. Um, it was just awesome, and I bought it in 1996. Oh, and yes, yeah, the original price tag there of two dollars. Oh, yeah, yep. now look for the people who keep telling me the magazines are not comic books. <laughs> Sigmund Freud called that projection, <laughs> <laughs> they're just upset that they didn't buy this for two dollars before Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out. And so now they got to run around and find some weird Marvel spotlight book that was barely worth a dollar. Hype it up on eBay and on YouTube to justify the fact that, no, really, that's the first comics appearance of him. Yeah, That's the book that's important. No, let me explain this to you here. You see this? Star-Lord. Marvel preview. And that Star book went Lord. astronomical when that first movie hit. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it went through the roof. Yes. Now, granted, he does have the seventies white man perm, so you know we we do have to forgive him for that. So, um, 
I expect him to start singing soft rock ballads to his ballads to us at any time. But <laughs> this is <laughs> gonna go the full Steve Perry, right? Hey, you know, I, either Ooh, that or he's gonna pull out a soprano saxophone and we're all gonna cry. So, um, but look at this cover with him juxtaposed against the moon right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is just awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a great cover, it's a, and it's a great book. Yeah, is it color yeah. inside or is that black and white? It's black That's and white. The Brady Bunch perm. Right. Yep. <laughs> That's right. It doesn't fit in his box. That's why he didn't consider it a comic. Well, you know, we, we can't do much for them. So, yes. <laughs> and yes, I, can, I agree with you. I think the black and white with the horror does yeah. work a lot better Gives you in more many detail. ways. And, you know, and it's funny seeing you refer to that because I've seen the, the Werewolf by Night both in color and, you know, with the color uh, on Disney+. Plus. And I really preferred the black and white version. Yep. I like the color here. one. Yeah. I thought it was good. Yep. But I preferred the black and white one. Yep. So. So here we go. First star Lord here. Great it book. It's wonderful. It might even be a little bit better than a very fine, but that's, I think whoever graded this was just kind of like, please get this thing out of the store. Yeah. Please have some sucker take this thing out of the store. It's right. Worth more than a buck now. <laughs> yep. It is. Yeah, I think I think I might have broken even on that book. So I was like, yeah, that might be one you get encased. <laughs> you know, yeah. CGC and I are on the outs right now. I got some things that came back from CGC and I'm not entirely sure what the oh, no, what the, the what the new book graders were smoking. So the CBCS magazine cases are incredible. They they yes, make the they C- CGC ones look yeah. like garbage. Even the new ones, the CBC ones are like a brick, man. You could club a baby seal with those suckers. Well, you know, and honestly, if I had the money, I would be doing that. But, you know, especially something like that one and this one I'm getting ready to show, they just, uh, they're way out of my budget. I, I don't have the budget to get these things slapped. CGC, graders, I want to. The CGC graders are smoking the guide to how to grade by CGC. Right? <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing. I, I really don't. So it's time for a story, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So my current LCS, uh, which is one of the two stores I had all the back issue magazines and everything. I went, it was about 20 years ago, kind of went, you know, wandering through the, the magazines like I occasionally did just to see what there was to see. And I stumbled across the striking cover of a character who I really, really liked. Oh, you got there that. You go. So good. And yeah. of course, you know, the guy at the counter just kind of looked at it and went, are you a perv? <laughs> Says said, the guy who's yeah. selling it. Yeah, well, I was, I was just selling. gonna say that, Rob. Yeah. This is the guy who's pushing and, the magazine. And I looked at him, I said, but you got like four or five boxes of porno back there. And he's like, So <laughs> you know, um he was one of the backup cashiers. Anyways, I bought this for the Satana cover. Right. Okay. I did not care that there was some weird middle story. With a talking raccoon and bunny in it, yeah. Because I mean, I don't even think I read it. You know, <laughs> that's right. Yep. And don't say that too loud, Callie. We're here in the south, so you know, be careful now, okay? Um, but <laughs> right. you know, I didn't care. Was it the middle story? And then all of a sudden, I, I hear those talk again before Guardians of the Galaxy come out. Oh my God, Marvel preview number seven. I'm like, they're putting Satana in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Man, they're going to have to get a really nice space suit for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with a bubble helmet. Well, yes, of course. It should. Yes, most definitely a bubble helmet. After all, with that hair, I mean, how could you not go without it? So, um. <laughs> those Marvel preview magazines, they're, I mean, they were, they are good. They're a good read. They're good by, they have a lot of characters that are popping up. And yeah. Well, and that's the thing, you know, you got a lot of these early 70s, especially a lot of the horror covers. Yep. That the horror characters that people are reusing. I mean, she's appeared quite a bit. She was in the Dark Thunderbolts and then or the Dark Avengers, whatever the heck they were yep. calling themselves, right? Dark, yeah. You know. And she's and even in that during, one season Hulu series, which I thought was really good, but people weren't into the horror series at that point. Like that horror series, I don't know if you watch it, Chuck, it was great. Yeah, no, it was it was really good. So like it was about the really 
really like open things up for season two after you got through their their trauma in season one. Yeah, but you know it, it was never gonna, it was not gonna make. So I think we all kind of knew that when it got dumped on Hulu. So, which was a shame. But this is just this is a lot of fun. So you know. So yeah. Yep. And yes, the six dollars down here is what I paid for it. So wow. <laughs> Bastard. You, again, yeah. you might have been okay. <laughs> you get Chuck. <laughs> hey. Now considering an eight and a half goes for four hundred and thirty bucks. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's a pretty good investment. Like what what other than gold, where do you get that kind of return, right? <laughs> I don't know. So all I know is my wife tells me I don't get enough of it. So that's uh <laughs> Rob's just nodding his head sagely, going, "Uh huh, yes, <laughs> yeah." It's just that you know, if you have hindsight, your investments come out smelling like roses every time. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. And you look brilliant. Yeah, yep. that's right. That's right. So, spec book. We have a silly spec book here. Um, Warner Brothers is it really. It is well. It's, it's well. It's a it's a larger size book. It's more of a kids magazine, but yes. Ooh. So Warner's really re-kicked off a, a new version, a, a renaissance in animation in the early 90s, right? And they did it with the Warner Brothers channel, the it, huge investment that was done uh, in those series. And there's one particular series that really started off that everyone's kind of forgotten about. It sort of filtered down the memory hole because the series that followed it, which was Animaniacs, just kind of blew everyone out of the water. And so we tend to forget about Tiny, Tiny Toons. Toons. I right can still on. sing that damn song, Chuck. I know it by oh, heart. Yeah. Oh, I can too. Oh, yes. Oh, I love. <laughs> I, man, I, I help. I might have actually organized my college schedule around making sure I got back for Tiny Toons and Animaniacs and Batman Adventures. Oh, my God. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it's okay, right? I didn't want to take Tiny Toons couldn't hold a candle to Muppet Babies. No. Yeah, yeah, they can. I agree with you on that, yes. But, unfortunately, Muppet Babies did not come in this size of a book. So, no. we, we couldn't bring my Muppet Babies here. And, and, Steve, before you before you judge, I had male friends who fixed their schedules around soap operas. So, I would think the Batman the Animated Series is much more culturally redeeming than what's going on in another world. So no I'm judgment. Just... <laughs> you deal with them kids all day. You got to bring your IQ down somehow. <laughs> hey, that's right. You know, and like Bill this and Ted is... said, like, uh, <laughs> sands through an hourglass. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so our lives. <laughs> we we could tell what was playing in Rob's home when he came home. So yes, yep. uh, Bill and Ted. <laughs> <laughs> My mom was a general hospital person. Mine yes. was another world. Luke and Laura was okay. like a big drama back then. It, that well. was that was a big drama. But this is this is a lot of fun. It's got some good stories here. Uh, you know, part of the trick was easy to make sure they're not filled in by kids, you know, because I think there are some puzzles and stuff in here. Yep. But um, you know, this was a lot of fun. Yes, Bizzle, I'm not arguing that point. Yes, I I, I agree with you. It's we're we're, we're like here, okay, you know. But again, Animaniacs didn't come in magazine size, which is the theme today. So, and this is um, super, super cheap. So it's really cool. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure, there's a reference there. I don't know, but that's great. Uh, Just we do move have on, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, don't want to know. So, and of course, we do have, uh, you know, Babs, uh, Babs and Buster Bunny, no relation. Um, so, Thankfully, you know, we do have the first appearance of <laughs> Max, and I'm sure Elmira is in here somewhere. So, uh, like, you know, that song's going to be in my head all week now. Yep, you're welcome. I'm no, glad to know I, I've done something to improve yeah. your life. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do it. I was going to say that was one of the catchiest theme songs of anything in animation. Yes. And it, it, it really was a well done show. I mean, they really yeah. captured the spirit of the Warners, of the traditional Warner stuff. Oh my yeah, God. they dumbed it down a little bit for the next audience, but there was still a lot of really smart stuff floating around in there. And then you get to Animaniacs where they don't really feel beholden to any prior creations because right. they're all new creations as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, derivatives of what, what already existed. And then they just really kind of went bananas and, you know, and then we get pinky in the brain. So, yes. 
Well, no, squirrel. Uh, yep. Yes, indeed. And that was kind of like the last era where they would like have like um, uh, where they would push the envelope and content for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Or they went uh, all worried about what everybody's going to think about what they're putting out. Well, and even then, I think they were worried about it. They just knew smart ways to do it. I mean, that's that's the difference. You know, you look at stuff like Freakazoid, and there's a lot of subversive stuff in Freakazoid. Oh, yeah. But it's not, depending on how you're looking at it, it's not super, super overt. Same thing with Pinky and the Brain. You know, Animaniacs, you know, which again gets a little bit more overt, but it's still not completely in your face. Right, and I remember growing up watching uh, the Looney Tunes. It was on on after school. I'd come home, you'd put your stuff mm -hmm. down, you'd turn on Looney Tunes, you'd watch that, and they would never play that for the kids now. Mm -mm. Oh, they uh, you can still find them on. Um, they're they're still on Cartoon Network and stuff. They have they have uh, bands of when they showed the old Looney Tunes stuff. So yeah, they they still do. So and of course, people forget Looney Tunes was created for adults. Yeah, you know, Looney Tunes was not created for kids. They were created for adults. You know, which explains all the cross-dressing done by Bugs Bunny. Uh, it explains all the celebrity references that I never got before, you know, my dad retired and watched TCM 24 hours a day. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> God bless him. You know, he, he deserved it. He practiced law for 30 plus years. He deserved to watch TCM for a while. Yep. Um, you know, but I never knew who a lot of those people were until I started watching some of those movies with them. That, that guy. Oh, that guy, you know. Right, then yeah. you get a whole nother level of viewing when you're when you see him. Right, yep. exactly. So yeah, and there are some references in there like that. And of course, Animaniacs did that a lot more. So, you know. Um I'm sure there's episodes now that they'll never air again. You either own them or you don't. Yeah. So you gotta find them on, on a channel on like a, a well, and, and there is there are some episodes that don't need to be shown again, to be quite to be quite honest. <clears throat> True. I mean they're that, there, that's there, like everything. There, there, there were some of the Mary Melodies. In fact, there was just a tweet about it actually not too long ago. Uh, they've been busy restoring some of the classic Mary, Mary Melodies. And one of the ones that has been restored uh, was the Cole Black uh, short, which I've seen. And it is definitely not going back on. No, no. Yeah, no. I, I don't think I've ever seen that one. Uh, there, there, there are many reasons for that. Yes. And now it's a brilliant piece of animation. It's a gr great piece of satire. Well, well, Marty, I'm glad to know that's uh, formulated your distrust of, of strange people in in um, in remote areas. So that's good. Um, <laughs> or, or a desire to snack constantly, <laughs> right? Because yes. we all really know what those Scooby snacks were. No, but it, it could explain a lot. So that was early edibles. <laughs> so. So those yeah. are those are th that's what I brought today for the show. So no, those are great books, man. That was Good fun. I was books. excited as soon as you told me magazines, I was super excited for tonight because I just love yeah. the magazines. And uh, I I know Mark and Steve do as well. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, and a fun something different. And we're mm -hmm. gonna have something different coming up. We're gonna have a ten one one board game edition coming up with Milt in May. Holy crap! Ooh. Where he's board bringing games. on. A bunch of board games, so like classic board games and stuff. So that'll be a fun one, something a little different. And that's what I liked about this. This was something a little different, a lot of fun, but great books, man. Thank you so much. For, and again, thank you for uh coming in to fill in for um for a guest. I appreciate it. Sure, it was a lot of fun. Excellent. All right. Well, let's uh let's go around our horn here. Rob, we always start with you on Tuesdays. What's coming up for you, sir? I don't know. We have a video on Thursday. I haven't figured out what yet, but there'll be a video on Thursday. <laughs> and then Saturday only slabs. Uh, we have uh, Comic Raider um, co from Instagram coming on, and the low grades. Uh, he'll be on uh, as our guest on only slabs this week. Yeah. Nice. And Mark, are you making appearances on uh, Joe's channel? Um, not. To, we just did uh, espresso mail call, and I don't know if there's anything else coming up. And unless I, you know, force myself onto your channel once in a while, Gary, then I just sit back right. and. That create havoc. Well, I noticed on that show you were taking the milt spot on that show and just trying to upstage everybody. I, I noticed <laughs> I, that. About I that. wasn't. I <laughs> was not. I was just simply showing some of the wonderful books that I picked up. 
Uh, Steve, what's coming up for you, sir? Well, Mondays I've been dropping uh, book or you know videos about my collection. Wednesdays is the Voices Choices, and then Friday will just be whatever my comic shop pickups that I got. But I should do a live at some point in time. I got some neat topics for it. I'll have to drag Mark on, so we'll be the crazy knuckleheads uh, talking about uh, how our spouses get stressed out about collections and what to do about it. So that's nice. one of the big topics that I want to tackle first. Mm -hmm. You just started your special missions, uh, G.I. Joe. Um... Yeah, there's only 28 yep. issues, so that'll only be three episodes. I actually just filmed the second one after my mic had crapped out on me, and I did the whole filming of it, and then I found out I had no audio. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah been there yeah. Yep, yeah i've done that i wanted to smash all of my equipment but i restrained myself <laughs> he's you know he's not representing canadians very well tonight mark he's had no, a lot i know he seems to be he, he said he showed restraint yeah, lots of he, rage he, he, well it's our last week of for this semester to teach so like yeah. the extra income is going to kind of peter out for picking up books so yep that's you know be problematic <laughs> I, I think Back he's more streets. channeling. Well, now now it's playoff hockey time. He's got to, he's got to channel in the 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 goon side. So there we go. So yeah. You know. Have you got skates on, Steve? Is that what's going on tonight? Like, just because you know, as soon as a Canadian straps on skates, we get angry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's time to hit people. Get the hockey stick out. Yep. That's the secret, right? <laughs> yep. Somebody says to you, Gary, I'm going to get my skates. It's time to run. That's it. <laughs> or, or if I just throw my gloves down. Yep. yep. Throw the gloves down. The gloves. That's it. We're scrapping. Grab We're the jersey, scrapping. pull it over the head, and start. Yep. <laughs> but you notice they don't say that about curling. So, you know, they go to say, I'm going to go get the rock. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's nice. Good for you. Yeah, that's so, nice. Yeah, go ahead and try <laughs> to throw that thing. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Chuck, what's coming up for you, sir? Right now, I don't have anything on tap. Uh, you know, you can find me over at Anachronic Comics. Um, you know, have a good time over there. Have a good time over here. And uh, you know, just love talking to people. So, right, yeah, you can catch uh, Mark and Chuck uh, whenever they feel like jumping on. Usually Thursday nights, uh, co-hosting here. So we, we try to keep them busy and dust them off and get them out of their closets here and there. Yep. <laughs> All right, coming up for me in two nights' time, we have Marco from Switch Comics doing his second 1011. Next week, we have Bub's Comics on Tuesday, which will be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll have a, a an a, a extra special co host on that episode. Uh, we have John's Comics with Kids on the 25th, which will be fantastic. And then on the 30th, we have Bill, Comic Mag Musings, closing out the month strong for us. So we got a lot of fun guests coming up. And like I said, on Thursday the 2nd, uh, to start out May, we're going to have Milt on with the game board edition of Ooh. the 10 one one Something fun, something different, classic board games. Some you probably didn't know were ever made. So we're going to have some, some good fun with that. And then on the 7th, we have Fantastic Girl making her first appearance on the show, Gabby on Instagram. So it'll be fun getting her introduced to the community and uh, getting to see what she's got in her books. So we got a lot of stuff coming up, and uh, May's filling up very quickly. Uh, but as always, guys, thank you, first of all, to my co-hosts who always add a lot to the show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you to my guest, Chuck. One of my favorite episodes because I love magazines. So, so fantastic. And, of course, to our our crowd, thank you guys so much for turning out and supporting everybody. Links are in the description below. Uh, so please go follow everybody and um, support our guests. Uh, they're great people. They have great shows, and they have incredible knowledge. So go check out their channels. Go check out where they're popping up and uh, show a little bit of love and support. And until next time, as we like to end these things, keep it casual. <laughs>